Hello, you're listening to the Witness History Podcast from the BBC World Service. I'm Ashley Byrne and today I'm taking you back to 1986 and the launch of a new TV programme in Japan that became an international success and inspired a new genre of shows all around the world. Actor Hayatu Tani has been sharing his memories of Takeshi's Castle. On the 2nd of May 1986, a brand new type of madcap game show hit TV screens in Japan. Our goal was to take over Takeshi's castle. If we succeeded, we would win the prize of 1 million yen. So everyone had to cooperate with each other to achieve that goal. It featured around 100 contestants attempting to complete physical trials and gain entry to the titular castle for a showdown with the fictional Count Takeshi and his henchmen. They wanted to create a fun computer game-like program for the TV, in which the general public would take the games very seriously, play to win, but ultimately fail. Leading the army of contestants against Takeshi was actor Hayatu Tani, who played the part of the general. At the opening of the program, I'd say, Now we are going to attack Takeshi's castle. There are various challenges awaiting you. Fight with all your strength. Got it? And everybody would say, Yeah! Takeshi's castle was the brainchild of popular Japanese actor and comedian Takeshi Kitano who also played the title role. Up until then, game shows were mostly studio-based quizzes, but Takeshi's Castle broke the mould by having a series of increasingly difficult and wacky challenges, like the Skipping Stones, which involved crossing a lake with sinking and moving rocks, Bridge Ball, where contestants moved across a narrow bridge whilst having cannonballs fired at them, and Avalanche, that involved running up a hill whilst avoiding giant boulders. I think the producers had a lot of foresight into how game shows would be in the future and computer games such as Super Mario. But here, real human beings were becoming players in the computer games. Unlike other game shows, which would only have music during the credits, Takeshi's Castle featured a full soundtrack made up of popular TV, film and video game music. Cartoony sound effects were also added as contestants fell into the water, got covered in mud or were wiped out. Ayoto Tani says playing the central figure of the general in Takeshi's Castle was almost a complete departure from his previous work. I had never appeared on anything like this before. I was originally an actor in theatre and films, but I thought that TV shows were becoming the mainstream more and more, and I didn't make a distinction between this kind of show and other acting work. So when the producer said, would you like to join this epoch-making programme that's a blend of sports and computer games, I said, yes, I'd love to come on board. The huge open-air set consisting of a blue and orange castle surrounding grounds and lakes was constructed near Tokyo. Any contestants who made it through the obstacle course surrounding the castle will be allowed to storm it at the end of the show in a final tank battle. The first episode we recorded was really tough because a lot of changes had been made on the go. We kept trying new things and adjusting them. And both the players and myself were very confused. But the great thing was that we found contestants who really enjoyed coming to the studio, playing the games and getting soaking wet and muddy. They really had fun. I feel that the show was saved by their happy faces. As well as Count Takeshi and the General, the show featured a cast of around 50 characters who helped or hindered the contestants, 
I tried to create a fun, friendly, positive atmosphere by talking with all the contestants. We were always worried about injuries, so a stuntman team did stretching exercises with them while waiting for the next game. As the general, I was always near to the contestants, taking care of them. Incredibly, there wasn't a single serious incident during the 133 episodes of the original series, despite the challenges becoming increasingly bizarre and potentially dangerous, such as contestants dressing up as giant birds and then being dragged through the air, or running full speed towards wooden doors that may or may not have been bricked up. At the start of each show, the number of the contestants would be around 100 or more. By the final showdown, it would be great if we still had 15 left. Sometimes, only three contestants made it. It was so difficult that during the original series, there were only nine winners. But that didn't put applicants off, nor did the danger, or how dirty or wet competitors got. Most of the contestants really had fun, although some people got angry because they got soaking wet in cold weather. But everybody seemed to enjoy getting covered with mud. They were all excited to be involved and hungry for victory, and it brought out something primal in them. Takeshi's Castle premiered on the 2nd of May 1986 and instantly attracted big audiences. After the recording of the first episode, I had no idea if it was good or not, but I'd done everything I could to make it work. Takeshi actually said to me, Tani, you're a lot funnier when you're acting very seriously. You don't have to try to make people laugh. And Tani says that it wasn't long after the first episode aired that his life began to change. My phone started ringing, and when I was walking in the street and eating out, people would say, hey, General. And then after a moment, I'd realize, oh yeah, that's me. One time when I was driving, suddenly a large truck approached my car and I felt like I was in danger. Then the driver opened the window, stuck his head out and said, Hey, General, do you remember me? I was one of the contestants. The show became even more of a success when it was broadcast outside Japan. 30 countries, including Saudi Arabia, Vietnam, the United States and the UK, screen the mayhem, often with a local presenter providing translation. One of the main reasons it gained global popularity is that you can simply enjoy the games without understanding the language. Although the original series of Takeshi's Castle ended in 1990, a number of remakes and reunions over the years have proved that it remains as popular today as ever. Takeshi's Castle is still held up as the gold standard for physical game shows. Takeshi's Castle is something special for me. I really loved doing it. I'm a person who doesn't normally look back on the past, but I will never forget this program as long as I live. Takeshi's castle actor Hayatu Tani ending this edition of Witness. It was a Made in Manchester production for the BBC World Service.